Oh, how's it going, everyone? I am back with another drink session. I didn't get to do uh, in my own time, so probably what we'll do in this session is just keep doing what we're doing and, and see maybe whether we can hit the, the finish lines for this at some point, see if we can get that started. So that's the plan. Let me know how you're going there, whether you've got any questions about. I think session, yeah, we kind of hacked away at the, the buildings. I feel like that's sort of, that's done enough. And yeah, the main thing we work on here is just, just refine, adding a little bit more detail to the, to the foreground. And yeah, it's a good opportunity to talk about stuff. Not sure how much we'll do on this lion. I feel like again the lion sort of could do with with it with another pass. Um, probably needs a right needs another leg there. That would be that would be advantageous. Don't know. Again, I, I was playing around with those different poses early on. Um, yeah, but, uh, I feel like this static pose feels good, right? Like, like the character's kind of just poised, right? Like just sort of static. I, I was trying like a moving one, but, but again, I felt like that worked better. Um, cool. So comment saying, hi, Tim, really enjoying this drawing and line and color stuff. Cool. Yeah. So we're just going to. That's what we're doing, prepping for the finished lines. So yeah, where does that? Now, again, if, if you want to get, if you're sort of lazy, what you can do is just kind of, we can copy this, control J and kind of like move it across. Obviously get rid of some of that stuff. But this way, just doing little tricks like this can be a really good way to just gauge like you know what it what it kind of looks like what it what it might look like depending on where it is because again there's this is where often you know drawing stuff becomes a little bit tricky is you know we've got we've got the anatomy but we've also got the tangents to worry about like where where do we where do we actually draw those lines so that they actually feel good? Again, not sure about the anatomy there. We'll do that as a second pass. Just gonna get a version of this on the second screen so I can check that out. And cool, there we go. So, again, I'll, I'll worry about the anatomy of this later. The, the first thing is just to kind of be like, well, what if, you know, if it goes here, does it look any good? Does it look, you know, does it create nice shapes? I guess that's the first question. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it sort of has to be somewhere there. And, um, you know, we, we can use that same sort of idea here if we get a little bit sick of redrawing stuff, right? If, if you feel like, uh, yeah, we really got to sort of hustle. What we can do is, you know, make some, make some more detailed sort of versions, right? So, you know, maybe get something on a layer like this and let's see if we can finesse it a bit about the upright plant style. So this is one that's going to cut through from a compositional standpoint. It's going to cut through and 
sort of intersect these different levels of parallax. So what we can do there is kind of just like move it around, you know, and, and sort of say, well, if we kind of put it here and there, Sorry, had minor interruption. Yeah, so if we drag this thing around, we can kind of get um, a feel for where it intersects different, different areas. And that really is the most important thing. So here I can redo this. So I can redo the, you know, drawing of it a little bit. You know, we can warp it, we can flip it. We can rotate it, etc. But the real key here is sort of how does it intersect these different levels of foreground, middle ground, and background. That really is the the main thing. And and so if you kind of drag it around, I feel like that's a better way to prototype that, right? Like that's actually a better way to tell. And again, this is just going to give us a an idea for how these things might function. Now, I'm not sure about this one. But I think those other ones are going to be pretty good. So yeah, that I feel like that one sort of ruins the depth a little bit. So what we can do now is just, right, sort of merge all that stuff down. And now we've got some of that work done pretty quickly. Now, again, as I said, we need to finesse that as we go. But I think what we'll find is it's gonna, that's doing a lot of work for us quickly. Now with those things, again, the, the best result is always going to be had by doing it properly. But that can be a way where if we consider that if we don't get it done quickly, we're not going to get it done at all. That is certainly better. All right, so control J. Control G, we'll flip horizontal. Let's drag this over and see whether we can sort of replace this. Just gonna erase out what was there. And the trick here is just to That. So the, the, the major things that are going to make a difference in terms of making it feel different are just the silhouette and the internal, the external silhouette and the internal silhouette about where these go, where these creeper vines and things go. So if we just put them in a slightly different position and again, a few different things here, then this will quickly start to appear a bit different. So even though it's, you know, a, a literally a carbon copy, if we pay attention to what is going to be picking up the eye, or what is going to be picked up by the eye, then we can be effective.
and yeah, you can see here I sort of had a few of these other big bits of leaf here. So again, they look different now, which I guess is really the whole point. Job done. Um, and all of this relies on the basic theory that if, if I consider the main thing that needs doing in the beginning is just preparing for the finished lines, the main thing I have to consider is just what do I need to prepare for the for those lines. So things that's very hard to do when we're creating finish lines is obviously take this giant thing and kind of move it around. Like it's very hard if I'm sort of zoomed here to gauge, well, like, is this going to look good? If I'm just making up where this plant goes, it's very challenging for me to put it in a good spot. But it's very easy for me to say, well, a plant does go here. It kind of roughly overlaps all of these areas. I know that's compositionally good. I can draw a slightly different version of that plant, though. Um, that's easy. So drawing a slightly different version of the plant, very easy. Um, just making one up as we go is um, very tricky. So one of the things I'm noticing here, though, is that this thing probably needs to go a little bit more that way. Because here it's kind of, there's like quite a gap. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the deal is there. I feel like maybe just that kind of needs to go in. All right, that's about there. So we need a bit more of a gap there than there is. And again, I'm going to use the same trick here. Some sort of stuff. All right, creating parallax, some fallen down boards, fallen down stuff. In there, I need to put my... Um, need to put my pen down to about, yeah, 60% again. All right. So there we go, getting there. Um, yeah, so a bit of extra refinement using these blocks, same as we did last week. Again, thinking about the micro composition. And in a similar way to what I was saying just then about, again, what's hard. I've sort of done a little bit more detailed work over here, figuring out how those particular little things are gonna look on the wall. Once I kind of set that level of detail in the ink, it will be very easy to kind of tell whether stuff I'm doing here in terms of how many cracks are there, how much detail is in the crack. All of those little things will be a lot easier to figure out over here because I've sort of figured them out a little bit more there. So here I'm kind of indicating a little bit more where all that stuff needs to go. And yeah, hopefully that'll be interesting enough. I feel like 
I mean, I kind of feel like it would be good to get, just make this a tiny bit wider. I feel like these are just getting a little bit squashed. Again, I, I don't know whether that's going to make a huge difference. But um, again, we can always crop it off. Uh, yeah, very hard to get it back if we need. So again, we're just sort of extending off this area. It looks a bit weird because, right, we sort of got that there. If we get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. Just adding some breathing room. Again, uh, this is production art. You know, we are trying to create a big mural and there's a lot of you know basic functional stuff that we can do there to make that better and you know it's always better to have a little bit of space you know that we we can sort of crop it here or you know you can crop it here but it, it is good to have a little bit of extra room you know so you can move it around or you know you don't run into trouble so yeah always good to to give a little bit of extra extra breathing room. All right, so I feel like this bit here isn't as resolved, but you know, we might not actually want it to be too resolved because you know, there's nothing really focal here. So I'm not too concerned about that. Just put a little bit of extra stuff here. And again, we sort of created a bit of that um, sort of these overlapping shapes, right? Meant to kind of represent little sort of mounds of earth. And it is worth just making sure that we play into that with some of those silhouettes. And, you know, really just form drawing those things out just gives us a pretty good idea of where all those little bits of form are gonna be. And, and that means again, you know, if I'm adding in little bits of grass or other details, I can just follow the, the form that's there and, you know, use that as a guide. And also this is a good opportunity to play with scale, right? So again, some of these bits of grass back here can be a little bit bigger than bits of grass over there. Whereas before, again, it was hard to indicate that too much. So over here, we'll have like small bits of grass and over here, we'll have larger bits of grass, I think. But anyway, so that's pretty much it. I think we were gonna spend a bit more time on the the lion but it's hard to know how much you know how much benefit that's gonna that's gonna give what i might do is just have a go at doing it this way and, and sort of see what it look see what it looks like because again you got to move forward um cool so uh just looking at the chat, uh, Ibram says, hello there, nice to meet you. How's it going? Yeah, nice to meet you too. All right. So again, moving forward. 
what do we do? Well, again, the, the way that I sort of do this is pretty simple. I just like to, and the reason I like to do it this way is because as you see here, I've got like a bunch of different stuff on different layers. I just make a new white layer and I reduce the opacity of it a little bit. And that gives me a very faint understanding of, you know, these lines here. And, you know, this means that now if I go over and, you know, we start adding more clean versions over the top, remember, we're going to go step down to about an eight with the brush, I thought. So if we go down here, you can see now that any line I make is very strong in its sort of visual impact compared to the lines underneath and, and that really is i think one of the one of the most important elements to kind of you know refining your line work certainly for me is is sort of understanding that the finished line work is just another drawing there's nothing special about it uh, nothing you know that we need to worry about too much but the thing that makes it really obvious that it is just, you know, another drawing is having that sort of previous drawing that we did fade into the distance. So again, that previous drawing is there, but, you know, as soon as I sort of start laying lines down, it, it just sort of disappears, right? Because it's visually not as strong. And to me, that that really is the key. Is uh, that's important for for a number of reasons. Oh, here you can see, I've done something dumb. So, he, what I've done is I've started drawing on the on the white lines, which again is a, is a downfall of doing that. Here's a cool tip if you ever end up making a mistake like that. So, what we'll do is we'll make a new white lines layer, and we'll set it to again a similar similar opacity. So we've got this, right? Got this set of lines. So let's just set them to 100%. What you go is you go into channels and I'm gonna hold control. I'm gonna click on the RGB channel. And that basically is just selected. I think it's actually selecting the white so what we do is shift control i will invert that i'm going to hit d Whoop. d for default colors although it's oh man that photoshop shortcut has locked itself so it's got like alt on um all right let's make a new layer I don't think I need to default the colors because they're there anyway. So you can basically isolate any of those selections that you want. Now again, I'm, I'm not sure about his eye here. I'm going to have to sort of rework that probably. But yeah, that's a really simple way to just extract some lines from a flat layer. If you've done, if you've made that mistake. Now we've been creating this over a few weeks now. One of the disadvantages of one of the disadvantages of creating lines over a long period of time like that is you kind of forget what you were doing. And so I'm more likely to kind of just follow the lines that I've done here. So in this case, again, I'm more likely to sort of say, well, I, I don't really know what these shapes were, but I'm just going to follow them along and kind of trust my, my past self. Um, as opposed to if maybe I had done some of these, you know, very recently, I'd sort of have in my head, oh, I know what that line is. And because I know what that line is, it means I can, you know, just sort of ad lib and change it and wing it a little bit more. 
Um, so again, there, there are sort of pluses and minuses to working in particular ways like that. So here I'm kind of just adding a bit of stuff as we go. And again, we'll see how solid this looks. Not entirely convinced this is going to, you know, hold up from a solidarity point of view, but we'll see. Thinking about adding some structure to that. We've got here and again, just having another go at the lines. And again, the the, the reason um, Catchulator Facebook user, again, I'm not sure who that was. I said, just going after their break at work. Um, yeah, the, the reason that I'm sort of readjusting some of these some of these lines, like again, the eye and stuff is I've got a smaller brush now, right? I've got a smaller pencil. And what that means is that I can, I can add that detail now. Whereas before, you know, I was sort of stumbling around a little bit. It was sort of hard to put that in. All right, now I've got it, it's all good. So we can go. And um, again, you know, erase that. What was there wasn't wasn't that good. Boom, boom. Not sure about that. So again, digital allows us to be a little bit more experimental in in this way when we're dealing with um, dealing with this type of finish line work which is which is sort of good typically if you were doing it differently you'd probably have to approach it in a um, again a slightly more systematic way to, to make sure you know we get all the lines we need right first and Yeah, don't make any mistakes. Whereas this way you can just kind of erase and um, you don't get any white out or other chaotic stuff there. So again, I'm trying to be a little bit suggestive with some of these things and We'll see how that goes. Again, it might be that, you know, it might be that I need to rework this, um, you know, this entire thing, who knows? Just having a go. Um, Cause yeah, it's so small, it's quite hard. And in fact, I think probably a good solution is I've got one. Uh, I've got one monitor up here, and I've actually got three monitors on this system. So uh, Tom is kind of asking, is this being done on a tablet with a display? Yeah. So the drawing's being done on a um, like a Wacom Cintiq 24 Pro. So it's um it's like a fairly big tablet. Um, like display tablet where I'm drawing on the screen and I've got a second monitor. Again, I've got like a version of this on the second monitor and, and I, I have actually, I actually have a third monitor that's over to the side here and I'm gonna put another version that is sort of of what I'm drawing, right? So in this case, that line writer character, I'm just gonna zoom up a little bit more so that I can kind of see what's going on there. Um, yeah, and that that means that it's like a lot, a lot easier for me to see what's going on. And 
that's probably not normally necessary because normally I'd be sort of optimizing for, well, can I see it on a 4K display, right? Like if it's too detailed for that, it's like, well, there's a problem. However, again, in this case, the, the reason we're doing this is to create a big mural sized illustration. And in that instance, these lines are not gonna be, they're not gonna feel small once they're printed. So it's a rare situation where having like multiple versions is actually going to be useful. So I can now see, I can, I'm looking at the Cintiq, but instead of like sort of zooming in and out like a crazy person, um, what I'm going to do here is Yeah, just start to just start the Camtasia recording. Yeah, so what I'm going to start to do here is just sort of draw at a particular scale that feels sensible for the for the size. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of look up at those other screens and sort of check the scale. Uh, which obviously does not translate at all on a stream. Yeah, so again, that's that's the basic idea. If we sort of go back to see where we kind of have, have been here, right back at the beginning, All right, this is sort of what we've been doing, had this rough version of it. And it's just a matter of kind of refining those details, adding little bits and pieces. So just stepping through the history and then new line, new layer. And then if we kind of zoom up, working through those finished lines, adjusting that. Go. And yeah, just kind of building that. So the idea is as, as I'm doing this, I'm checking those other screens as much as possible, making sure everything's kind of working with the scale. The biggest danger is that yeah you're going to be working on an image this big or any sort of illustration that's this size and you kind of start noodling around inking and then you kind of zoom out and it's not working right like that's the you know that's the major problem that you're you're probably going to face um and i think even if you have a really cheap second monitor that's gonna that's gonna majorly help you in that instance And uh, again, you know, I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, doing this type of work at this scale um, would be quite challenging on a on an iPad or something like that. So we've got another sort of bit of hair going there. Got this ear, another bit of hair here. And I've, I've put in enough sort of detail that, that I kind of can trace but also I have to make up a bit of stuff, right? There's the, the lines that I was inking with or doing those lines with initially were a little bit bigger. And so there's another level of detail here that I'm trying to hit. There's another, there's another set of sort of details that I've got to figure out.
right? Like these lips are probably a good example. That nose is a good example. I'm not sure how much I should make it like a mark, right? Or just make it like a, a few little lines. might be better off zooming in. And often what I'll do is I'll sort of draw out a little bit more of the mouth, but um, what, I'll, what I'll sort of ink in is just that sort of the, the point at which the lips connect with each other. Let's see, that could probably, could probably go down a bit. Trying to, trying to, going silent. Make sure I get these lines right. Some of these are like pretty prominent lines. Um, they'll be, you know, really, really visible. So you gotta, you sort of gotta get them right. And again, trying to trying to get like trying to make this like one big sort of smooth flowy line is um, again, it's going to be silhouetted, so that it's kind of fun to do that. It's not one hundred percent necessary, but often you know I find if we if you know if we kind of do make that a bit more abstract, it kind of means that it doesn't have to be quite as accurate if it's like a sort of a fun line. Um, so yeah, Daniel's asking how many hours to finish the line art. You mean sort of like this phase? So like to, to, to get from like where I am to kind of having all of this done. Like, what do you, what are, geez, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> um, or, or like, uh, how much to get to this point? We'll see. I mean, I, I I'm just sort of. Yeah, I mean, this it's not like a job that needs to get finished at any particular time. So, so far, I have just kind of been like drawing stuff. I'll draw a million flowers and leaves and stuff. Um, it's probably not the smartest way to go about it. Yeah. Hopefully not, not that long. To, to get from this to sort of finish. I mean, I'm working on the, you know, the main sort of characters at this point. So, you know, we, we want to make sure this stuff is kind of okay. Some of the other things can be a little bit, a little bit rougher. Um, Yeah, how? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of thinking like probably it would probably be like four hours, right? It's probably gonna take a while. We'll see. Again, the most important thing is to you know figure out how much time you have and then prioritize prioritize the silhouette so there's some lines here which are going to be seen and some which are not going to be seen so again these silhouette lines are in the focal area they're going to be seen um you know some of them aren't going to be seen and so you 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 see me be a lot rougher with some of those 
right. Um, I will say that, you know, having the, having a drawing tablet, having a Cintiq um, or equivalent sort of drawing tablet does make this phase a little bit easier. Um, when I was, you know, working on, you know, just sort of normal Wacom tablets, uh, you know, you just have to redo stuff a lot more at this phase. So, you know, there was a little bit more trial and error, you know, getting, getting those lines right. Whereas I feel like now it's able, it's a lot easier to get, you know, lines that look okay. Um, quicker. And I think a big part of that is sort of the, the fluidity that you can get means that if a line is wrong, it's, it might be wrong, but, you know, with a little bit of character versus, you know, on a Wacom tablet when lines are wrong, you know, they, they often don't look that good. You know, it's just like, ugh, it's just ugly. But yeah, just trying to, tr I'm trying to sort of go as, as quickly as possible. And, you know, often what I'll do is, um, do that for a bit and then step back and be like, is this working? Do I need to pay more attention? Right. Or is this, is this speed and this amount of care, you know, gonna, gonna be able to do it. It's just going to get us there. And also, you know, I, I haven't been doing a lot of inking like this recently. I've been doing a bit, bit more sort of sketching and, and stuff. So probably as we go, we'll sort of speed up. So zoom up there. Again, that's such a habit to just sort of zoom up. Uh, and here again, you know, I had sort of drawn I'm not sure whether that hand actually works there. So th it's these types of things that are really good to have that, um, that second and third monitor. four because you can really easily kind of spot is this working So again, it doesn't all have to make 100% sense. I, I've tried to make it kind of make sense on a basic level. All of these ropes and things when we we're beginning now that we're sort of, you know, at the tail end of it. It doesn't, doesn't really matter too much as long as the, the general feel of it is there. Um, so you 
doing these kind of lines is, is a lot easier on a on a Cintiq than it is, you know, on a Wacom. So again, like this is kind of meant to be some sort of sack thing. Doesn't look super convincing to me at the moment. So a bit of extra kind of texture, right? Let's sort of anchor some of those lines. So again, doing, the, doing this type of textural sort of work is something that yeah, you can really only do, or, or is a lot easier to do, right? Where we're sort of like pushing some darks and, you know, doing a little bit of sort of shading almost is something that's a lot easier to do when your opacity of your brush is set to, again, that kind of 60, 70% level, because I, I can sort of go in there and, right, and, and, you know, push a line a little bit more. So again, you often see me, again, you know, erase out stuff, put the line back down, have another go at it. I think, again, getting used to doing that is, you know, is a big part of digital art for me, of that sort of inking process. So being able to like blend the lines is quite helpful. Again, I'm playing around here seeing whether like just sort of more overlap is is interesting. Just watching the tangents. But yeah, it, but potentially it could be quite easy to um, you know go too far on some of those things and end up with messy lines. But yeah, just being able to like put a little bit more sort of darkness here or there, I think is sort of very useful from a stylistic point of view. Makes it feel a little bit more um, illustrative, a little bit less like a, a sort of hyper clean, you know, inked look, which uh, again is something that I sort of prefer. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it's if I'm sort of, if you look there, another good thing to do, we don't need that. Let's get rid of that. But if you do just kind of create another white layer, another reason I like sort of working this way. So we've got, all right, we've got sketches and then we've got a white layer set to sort of 85% or something like that. And then I'm doing the, the lines obviously on a layer above that. But here I've got a, a second white layer. And if I just turn that on, then I can kind of instantly see what it looks like without, um, yeah, without any, adding any of that underdrawing. And, and that can be quite valuable to have as a, yeah, as a thing there. So let's see if we kind of fill in some of these details. So again, just sort of stuff. We talked about that a few weeks ago. I think just figuring out like how to put stuff on the the pack animal. Imagine it's all just kind of laid out there on the ground. Hmm. 
and then kind of put it on. And here we're getting, yeah, some sort of water bottle or some other sort of thing. So what I can see is, yeah, I mean, just then, right, I sort of zoomed out and I was finding yeah, it's like a lot harder to, you know, nail those lines when I'm sort of zoomed out like this, you know, I've got to control a little bit more. If I zoom out again, again, I can see more of it, but you know, it's a little bit harder to just kind of use big sort of arm motions and, and go quickly. Whereas, you know, here I'm finding it's, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to just kind of go for it. Be a little bit looser. Let's try and do a better job of doing whatever that was. This steer. So again, not all of this needs to be, you know, hyper detailed. We can, you know, we can lose some of these little bits and pieces here and there. Again, we, we can sort of move more towards abstract, you know, just like there's the lines here, they're kind of going in the right direction. They might be this, they might be that. Think about that as if it is similar to a, um, uh, like a painting, right? It's just kind of getting loose there. Okay, he's got a sword here held in this, this arm here. All right. Don't know what this is. That's, that's often that's often risky when I sort of see it align. And again, I sort of drew it a while ago and you're just sitting there going, I, I don't know what that is. Very, very often I'm just like, ah, I'd be okay. And then I realized it was actually meant to be something really important. <laughs> I completely completely forgot about so again try not to do that too much here Put shadow A shadow i mean it could just be meant to sort of be like you know these lines here which is sort of meant to represent right that kind of saddle going down This is where, again, I'm kind of making stuff up. And, and you can see, again, I was doing it a little bit zoomed out. And the lines aren't as good. You know, if I zoom in and I'm sort of got quite a big, big canvas here to really, you know, hack away at it. And, um, you know, when it's zoomed out, it's quite a big bit of paper. Very easy to, you know, make stuff up. Use big, flowy lines. But uh, yeah, you got to have the second monitor to blow it up on, oh, no. so you can see see how it actually looks on the on the full version. Otherwise, yeah, I've got really no idea what I'm doing here, unless I look up and see, and it's like, okay, yep, that's working. Um, but yeah, you can see here, I'm I'm kind of making something out of this. Let's add a little bit more dimension there. So none of these details existed in the underdrawing. I just made them up then because I just thought, oh, we need something a little bit more. All right, again, let's push some shadows there. And again, here I'm like, well, what was this? I'm like, oh, that's right. That's like another sort of sack with a, with a rope tying it and again it's got a little shadow a 
And this is why we need to focus so much on structure in the, in the beginning. If we focus on structure in the beginning and I'm not having to like reassess major, major markers or anything, um, you know, like I'm not having to zoom out and go, oh, does, does this actually flow around the creature? If, if I can rely on this, and just sort of say, yep, look, that's that's probably right. Um, you know, now I can just cruise through it and just say, yep, that's, you know, I mean, I drew that before. It's probably right now. You know, I can be sort of zoomed up here and, yep, have a go at these. So that's often what allows, you know, as I said, the, this phase to, to go quickly. You know, I, I know what I'm doing here. Like I was sort of saying here, it's very easy for me to kind of, if you know, if I'm zoomed up and drawing leaves, it's very easy for me to say, well, let's put another leaf over here. But it's very tricky to do that while I kind of gauge whether or not it's in the right spot. So there's always phases and, and sections to these processes where we we deal with particular things at a particular time. And what I'm focusing on now is can we make it all, can we make all these lines interesting? So one of the things I'm definitely going to prioritize here is making sure that I leave these lines on the lines main a bit open. Again, there's many different ways I could go with it. Um, or at least that's my plan. We'll see see how it goes. This means it'll be a lot more work in the flatting stage, but I think this will feel a lot more ragged and open and like actual fur if I kind of treat it like that. All right, I think I need some, um, need my line reference back. Got the eye here, again, sort of closed. Yeah, pretty sure this is not, um, uh, not, not winning me any um, sort of feline anatomy awards. We'll see, again, I can, you know, I can have a go. Often, the, you know, if we if you're out of time, which again, I'm I'm not actually out of time. I can always kind of fuss around a lot more if I want. But you know, if we sort of think about it as being a little bit out of time, because um, you could easily spend a lot more time here, you know, in general. But if if we think about it as being, you know, trying to go quickly, again, there's so many strategies to use, but a really good idea, I think, is to kind of just go, you know, and then, you know, if we need to to go back and fix it later, we can and we will. Because often, you know, if we're thinking about, you know, these issues, like how do I, you know, how do I draw the anatomy? for the line you know what's what's going to look good what's what's not going to look good the question is does anyone care is it going to make any difference you know like what is the line of this what is the line of that um does it actually have to be a perfectly anatomically correct line in the first place you know what what's going to be interesting um you know and it, it can be quite hard to to know until you're all done, you know, until you, you know, the, the whole thing's finished and you sort of zoom out and then you're like, oh yeah, you know, that's, that's fine. So yeah, it, it, it can be worth it. Again, you got to use your spidey sense. You got to tune your spidey sense for those things, All right? Is this going to matter? Is anyone going to care? Is this going to look like, you know, 
a giraffe instead of a lion. Is it going to look like a you know a dog, not a cat? Who knows? We'll see. If it does, we'll fix it. But again, might be worth just seeing how much we can get away with here. And that's opposed to the way you probably should do it, which is to, you know, double, triple check it at the, at the rough sort of phase, really make sure it's going to, you know, for sure work there. Again, this is not necessarily how you, one should do it. This is how I am doing it. Um, So yeah, not not sure about how. Not sure about how that's going to look. I feel like this line is like a bit strong. And again, the reason I'm paying attention to these lines is because they're, you know, strong silhouette lines. We, we're going to see them. These internal ones aren't as important. So these lines are far less important than these lines. This line, which sort of anchors the um, the saddle thing to the tail. Again, make sure those are sort of connecting. And what else have we got? We got these ones. Yeah, so some of this inking work or, you know, finish lines is going to be pretty intellectually draining. And some of it is just going to be a lot of kind of chill out. You know, it's just going to be a lot of hanging out and drawing leaves and stuff. So, you know, it's just a matter of knowing which is which and, and scheduling in, you know, some of that time. So. Um, I think like uh, Daniel was sort of saying, you know, like how long to, to finish the line art. Um, probably, you know, it might be like sort of four hours, but it's probably going to be an hour and a half of actual sort of brain on time. And, you know, a good sort of three hours of, you know, just sort of noodling around. And that's where, you know, with this sort of thing, this is one of those rare scenarios where, you know, I might watch a movie or, you know, do something that's, you know, going to sort of take my mind off it and allow me to, um, you know, just sort of chill out, do some stuff at the same time. I feel like that nose is too big. Those lips might be too big too. Let's see. Uh, Yeah. 
that, that. What's under here? Not sure. So yeah, just sort of making that not like sort of not very distinct. And again, put in a few shadows, etc. Blend some of these things in. Right, some of these ropes and things, you know, don't want them to be that prominent. But here again, you know, we can anchor some of those details a bit. Right, just like if if we kind of put contrast where some of those lines meet, it kind of connects them up a little bit more. Just kind of anchors the, the shape, you know. So for instance, here we've sort of got a line here, we've got a line there. What we want to do is sort of separate you know, lines that are actually really sort of things versus lines, you know, like this, that might be a bit more sort of like shading. Um, so again, that's one of the things I'm doing by just, um, you know, pushing. Little dark bits in there. Cool. So yeah, not 100% sold on this hair or anything like that. Again, I, I feel like, you know, some of this might need an extra pass. I feel like this could be like, might be better to just kind of have this be. Zoom up again. Just a little bit simpler. Yeah, it's getting too complicated as well. Again, maybe some of this is like just a bit, it's like a bit much there. Some of this might be a bit much. Again, really hard to tell until we got that sort of finished, finished stuff on. Because there's not going to be any, um, not going to be any shading on this. It's just going to be flat color. Um, so yeah, it's not going to. It's going to look different to the to the previous image. Um, yeah, be be a lot sort of simpler in terms of the rendering. So you know, all those kind of lines do make a lot of difference. All right. So yeah, again, just moving through it. I need to zoom up. All right. And yeah, just gonna keep, basically keep doing this. And as I said, you know, um, you know, a big part of it is, you know, this is the first sort of bit we're finishing you know the characters here so you know it can be pretty challenging to really figure out like you know is this enough detail is this going to work um and that's why again you know I'll, I'll come back to this you know i'll figure out whether we need to adjust that you know how the line should look once we've kind of done the rest of it we'll get a maybe a better feeling for that like how does the texture of the hair match everything else? You know, maybe we need better, again, better sort of micro composition in the hair. Right, some like sort of bigger shapes and then smaller shapes. So it's, it's, it's a little bit less chaotic. Again, hard to tell. But I think what we should do now is we'll, we'll just take a quick break, come back in sort of five minutes or so, five or six minutes maybe, because again, we've sort of been going for about an hour already. And when we come back, we'll just keep sort of um, working through the inking. So yeah, let me know if you've got any questions about the line work so far and 
um, you know, what what we need to, you know, what 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 you're struggling with with line work, maybe, you know, some sort of tips that I can go over because I'm doing this right now, you know, so any sort of, how do you do this? So how do you do that in terms of inking or line work? Let me know. And uh, yeah, we can sort of demonstrate on this image as we progress. But anyway, yeah, we'll be back in, yeah, maybe five or 10 minutes after a quick break.
Cool. All right. We're back. Gonna keep keep working through. Again, might need to double check some of the anatomy on here. Later on, we will see. Um, and again, tricky to know like what, yeah, what's going to go over what with the character here. So again, I'll, I'll have to play around with, uh, you know, where it starts and stops. Um, in terms of, you know, what's in the foreground, what's in the, you know, what's in the middle ground, like what are these leaves? Where are those, where do these bits of grass go? That will be, that will be part of the equation. All right, so in terms of, um, you know, getting some of these lines, again, going, going a little bit closer in and again, taking a few goes at it. All right, so going closer in and probably easier to rotate this. So it can be hard to sort of make those meet. Again, typically what I'll do, right, if they don't meet is kind of just a raise and sort of see if I can get them to match up. It's easier, obviously, to start from this side. Will I be able to finish the illustration? Probably not. I, I doubt it. We we don't have heaps of time because I think we're only we, we've only got another sort of half hour on the stream. Um, but I think what what I will do is probably go through and do the the, the rest of the lines on my like you know on my own again as a you know in in a sort of fairly chilled out manner. So we'll see how far we can get with this now. But yeah, I think for the most part, it's going to take a while. Um, and that's just, you know, it's that's just the scale of it, right? It's like pretty detailed that there's a there's a lot of stuff um, to, to work through. But I think we've got one more stream. So again, what, what we might do is... Um, yeah, see how we go with the lines and then we'll see how we go with some of the some of the color. I don't know whether again, I think probably that the key is to kind of not do the boring stuff on the stream. Make sure it's kind of a little bit interesting. Um, Cause yeah, there's a lot of stuff where it's kind of yeah, better off not thinking about it too much. It's just better to kind of put on put on a movie and kind of chill out through the process. It's not really much to, to think about or anything. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I don't know whether, you know, adding some tonality or sort of shading to, to this leg is going to, is gonna sort of help us. We'll see. And this kind of shading, you know, and, and sort of line work really is just sort of abstract. So, you know, it's not meant to fully represent um, you know, the fur or anything, 
it's kind of just giving giving some sense of texture right so the idea is like well that there is some texture there right it's not just right it's not nothing but yeah you know i'm not sitting there drawing heaps and heaps of um specific strands of fur and again i do want to kind of separate that bottom kind of pad out Anyway, we'll see. I think that's probably enough. So this is where it's important to put some organization into the layers and, and think about how the layers are gonna go. Typically, it's easy to start at the front. You know, I've done the characters and the characters kind of, you know, work there. Um, yeah, I feel it. Not sure that yeah, I feel like that line has to go a bit there, um, but I think now that I've sort of got that done, it, it's probably easier to start at the front and the front. Right, if we think about the logic of it, probably. Right, we've got this stuff. Mm, even maybe just this, this, All right? So we, we sort of, I sort of want to get like as many of these sort of plants on separate layers, right? So that sort of might be a good first layer. And then the second one would probably be this stuff, right? sort of stuff here, right? This stuff, this stuff, this stuff. And then after that, we could probably have, hmm, don't know. Yeah, probably get these on a separate layer, right? So then these would be on a separate layer, right? And then this sort of middle ground stuff would be on a separate layer. And then the arch. So it means the foreground is probably going to have like, you know, one, two, three, four layers on it. So again, that that just sort of will allow us to get the parallax in the in in the foreground pretty easily. Oh, let's make sure we get that off that layer. So that's the characters. So then we'll basically have foreground one. Foreground two. Oh. Foreground three. Foreground four. Um, and thinking about it in terms of depth. Yeah. And then we'd have probably, again, a similar level there. So again, that just helps me think about it. Foreground one. So top is in far foreground, All right? So again, we sort of think about, All right, these kind of objects. Now, probably something we could do or could play around with is, is maybe using a, like a 10 or something, like a slightly more, um, slightly larger brush here. Just gonna ink very mundane leaves. But this is often the, you know, this is the point at which I feel like people often tune out in terms of, you know, like what, what you imagined being an artist was like. You probably didn't imagine it was you inking um, leaves and rocks and things for a million 
a million hours. Um, but you know, this is this is kind of what you need to do, you know, to, to get that sort of detail there. Again, this is not going to be the you know super high brain power stuff, but this is what will make the difference. And then again, we've got some some more. Now, keeping in mind, what we're really after is the silhouettes here. All right, so making sure that those silhouettes are, are working. All right, got this bit, that bit, that bit, that bit. Again, add a few little bits here to make it different. All right, there we go. So even just thinking about like what what direction some of these leaves and things are going to go in is important you know we can make you know this one look different to all these others just by kind of modifying one or two tiny little things now even though this is pretty mundane it's it is something that's kind of important to be able to do. And, you know, I'd really recommend giving it a shot. Um, often, you know, creating these types of leaf shapes and all the different sort of iconic bits and pieces here, it, it's, it's a little bit harder than you might imagine. And all I'd recommend is go slowly in the beginning so if you're having trouble, right, like getting a leaf shape, like quickly, you know, maybe it sort of ends up like they're all, they're always a particular way or they get wobbly. Just again, go slowly in the beginning. And hopefully what will happen is you, you sort of get that muscle memory. And so later on, you can go a lot faster. But in general, again, we don't need too many details down here, but I definitely don't want to, you know, drag the viewer's eye there by, you know, trying to put some things there and it not working. So, you know, if we get too messy, you know, in these foreground shapes, people are going to look at it and be like, what, what's that? What's, what's up with that? Um, so we don't want that to happen. We want to keep it pretty pretty loose, pretty simple. Um, so again, have a similar thing here. And so these are just easy, simple silhouettes that are going to work. And, you know, th these are going to be on their own little layer. So, you know, some of the, some of the stuff here, right, the green here will actually be on the layer that's around, that's over here. Um, and we'll be able to sort of just get this as a silhouette, which is, again, it's really important to understand how those kind of overlaps function. Because that's where, again, you know, it, it's a lot of fussing around now, but once once we sort of get to it, it's going to be pretty easy to, you know, just magically fill these with flat color and then get a nice, clean, you know, finished, polished illustration, um, you know, without doing any extra work. So, you know, this here is the work, right? Like one, once you sort of do this, that's that's it, you know, it's done, really. It's, it's just a matter of, 
once we get to this level, um, you know, that's that's all. It's all, it's all over. Just put flat color in there, and that's going to be that's going to be the end of it. So even though it feels like this is going to be a lot of sort of noodling the same type of same type of thing, same sort of plants. Um, you know, th there isn't a lot of quicker ways to get a highly polished illustration. Because if you did this and you were just photo bashing it or putting in a few little things here and there, you know, a few sort of paint marks, once you blow those up, they, they'll look kind of messy. Right, you, you'll see, you'll see all the, the texture there. Whereas this is gonna hold up a little bit better, I think, given the amount of time we're gonna put into it. See, the idea here is we're just dealing with sort of, you know, weeds. stuff and again it's just going to be this silhouette versus the the stuff behind it all right so same thing here Going to keep these a little bit simpler. These are not sort of focal areas at all. But yeah, this is something that if you've done it before, it makes makes a lot of sense. Um, if you haven't done it before. It feels like maybe there's going to be a quicker way to do it, but not really. This is probably about as quick as you can get. So again, same sort of thing as we've been doing before, just patterns and because the thing is, if Again, in case anyone's wondering, like, why is this quicker? What are you talking about? Well, what I'm doing here is defining the silhouette. So draw the layers. It's very easy to then go through and use them to create selections. And if I can then create selections, it's very easy to then just fill that selection with flat color, basically. So as opposed to me having to go through and, um, you know, flat out or like paint out these sort of little silhouettes and bits and pieces, I'm not going to have to do any of that. That's all going to take care of itself throughout the process. If I draw these things on the right layer, it'll all kind of come out in the wash from a process standpoint. There'll be a lot of fiddling around, but again, none of it will be challenging fiddling around it'll all be very very easy fiddling around and every every process every technique you know out there has a different set of payoffs like that um you know there's a different stage at which you're going to start to see results and with a line and color illustration we do all the detail first so we have a lot of this sort of you know repetitive work here but once we sort of progress to the finish it just sort of gets easier and easier and easier whereas you you're kind of you know roughing things in and you know using more of a painterly approach this will sort of go a lot quicker the beginning and you, you get a much better feel for like oh wow you know look at this thing you know it's all there there's heaps of stuff there and it's almost finished but the last 10 or 20 percent will take you maybe you know 
50 or 60 percent of your actual time so you know getting the last little bit of 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 detail there is very 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 tricky with a painting process and that's where you'll be yeah again you'll probably do the same thing you know where you go through and you know detail out things and draw blades of grass but um, it doesn't seem quite as abstract whereas with the line and color process yeah we sort of often dealing with these kind of repetitive tasks a lot more but yeah there's not really any trick to this as you can see just going through slightly modifying these little bits and pieces and trying to give this little I don't know what it is. It's a little sapling or weed type tree. Again, there's a lot of trees that are kind of, you know, just really gnarly. So again, you know, you can see all of these are kind of based off that same little one I copied over, but it's very easy to sort of make them look, um, look very, very different. So yeah, I'd probably say given, again, the pace that we've got so far, yeah, I think this would, this will be sort of four hours of drawing, drawing stuff for the, for the finished lines. Something like that. And again here. Zoom up. Again, just modifying this a bit. Choosing which leaves. Draw in. And again, once you sort of get into the flow of it, you can maybe go a bit, bit faster. And again, if you get bored, um, it, you know, probably the best thing to do is to, you know, try and draw some different plants, you know, crack out the reference, um, you know, prepare for that, try and, you know, get into the botany of it. Again, I'm using very simple sort of set of processes here, as I said, maybe, maybe the way this one could be different is just to kind of cut it off, make it like a lot. A bit more, a bit more wide over here. Yeah. So anyway, let me know if you guys have got any questions because we'll probably, um, probably end the stream soon again just sort of short sessions but this is what it's all about and so that's foreground right far foreground now if we go on to the the next stage this is where I'll start to ink these And yeah, I've got all these little things to follow, which we went over 
last session, putting all these cracks in. You can see that's getting that, that Wacom wobble from being a little bit sort of far out. It's just getting jittered. Still happens on a Cintiq, although I feel like a little bit less. And again, the, the thing that we really have to pay attention to there is those harsh silhouettes, right? Where we're going to see that, that shape come across. Whereas, you know, once we get down here, it could probably be a little bit rougher with it. and again blend some of those things in a little bit more but yeah that's basically it that's how we sort of handle this type of scene from a you know finished lines point of view um same process as the as the rough lines except i'm just focusing on you know that that line quality a little bit more getting you know just making sure we you know close those lines but yeah similar sort of idea and again i keep saying it because it's so important the the main thing we're doing is we are controlling the silhouettes that will be most prominent so we're thinking about the hierarchy of detail the primary way that you're always going to be able to show detail and make sure it you know feels like oh there's actually stuff going on is with where you've got you know silhouettes where you've probably got you know one plane overlapping another plane and in that case that's where you want to put all your time and attention and the only way again you learn that is through trying to do it differently <laughs> and suffering you know because it's you know i can put as much effort as i want down in here but you know the reality is it's probably not going to be seen that much you know so those lines can be a little bit sort of rougher and more suggestive again i'll play around with this once i you know might um, turn off where are we uh, yeah, I might sort of, you know, look at it like this later on and, you know, just sort of refine that, that sort of level there. But for now, this is what we're dealing with. And again, I think, um, you know, as long as we're kind of like fairly consistent, but playful and rough with these lines here, they're going to read primarily as texture, right? So these lines here that I'm making, again, they're not really meant to show form. They're more about pattern. But again, we still want to kind of, you know, add little bits of detail here and there. But again, you know, the difference between me, you know, playing around with texture of the rock and texture of the of the plants is very similar, right? They, they, they're going to look very similar. The, the marks are very similar. Um, you know, most of what will differentiate it is the color underneath, you know. And again, because it's not silhouetted, 
it's not important. So, you know, it's, it's almost probably going to be better if I don't put too much, um, too much effort there. But yeah, so I'm mainly looking for silhouettes here um, that are kind of on this next plane. And yeah, so I think it's like, yeah, all this stuff. That's, that's it. So I think we'll probably, yeah, we'll call it a day here because guess what I'm going to do next? I'm just going to do more of the same. Keep noodling around, keep drawing rocks and grass and little leaves and just kind of zone out and view this more as a little sort of cathartic hand-eye coordination exercise. And hopefully the trick is not to zone out too much and, you know, get to a point where we're not looking at the hole. You know, I still want to see the hole. I still need to kind of look up at those other, um, yeah, those other images on the other monitors and just double check it. But, you know, mostly it's just zooming up, noodling around, um, just kind of saying, right, this is the rock. This is this other thing. This is what we're, this is what we're creating. So just got to kind of noodle those same patterns, make it consistent. And yeah, the most important thing is pay attention to the silhouette and don't spend time on stuff that's not going to be seen, especially early on. Um, you can always go through and do another pass on some of these concepts, some of these little bits and pieces, but for the most part, it's really devastating to spend heaps of time on something. And then you kind of just, it just all kind of disappears right into nothing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really important to, to be able to categorize yourself, how much, um, you know, how much focus and, and energy to put into these different things. And again, that also comes down to the speed, right? We want to make sure we're not spending ages doing it. But anyway, that's it. So we'll catch you. Um, I think we're doing another session on Thursday. And I'll, I'll see how far I can get with this in the in that intervening time. Um, again, I don't have heaps of time, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.